Hey everyone, it's Nukin here, and I am bringing you a video talking about the new unit, the Shade, and also we'll be discussing the patch also in this video. So if you want to skip around, I'll put some timestamps in the description below. First off, let's talk about the brand new unit. It's called the Shade. So what is the Shade? The Shade is a Nod flying unit. And it states here that this week we raise the bar for every forthcoming fight by introducing the latest addition to the Nod faction, the Epic Aircraft Unit. Epic meaning the purple colored unit, which these units are hard to level up and come by the Shade. You can see here the Shade has the capability of being able to fly. You can also see in the GIF here that it can go around and get stealth and then it can one shot something like a slingshot. You can also see that the MLRS that was nearby also got EMP'd as well, so it has multiple capabilities. You can see here once the shade crosses around the Razorback, you're going to go over here, we'll be able to one shot the shade, and also the EMP effect goes on the MLRS. The EMP is going to actually slow the attack speed of the other adjacent units across the shade so it get all stealth units get revealed on platforms and by infantry so if there's none of that around you can fly and do damage and then maybe sneak out and re-stealth for example the nod shade actually here the the stats for the unit we have a Air Tower, of course, because it's a flying unit. It's from Nod. We talked about that. You can build it, and it's an epic unit. We talked about that as well. But the Tiberium cost, this is, this is new, and it costs 40 Tiberium. So very cheap flying unit that has a lot of capabilities for the cost that it has. It flies. It has burst damage. It has stealth and it can attack also other ground units like infantry, it does decent damage against infantry. The only thing it cannot attack is other flying units, but that is not too much of a problem because of its cost. Even if it goes down to an enemy aircraft or enemy sort of anti-air ground unit, it only does cost 40, and if it gets the job done, like maybe killing an MLRS that's planted in a, in a sort of fortress position or a slingshot, and then you can bring in your bombers or whatever else you want to do there and uh, take control of the area of the map with this unit. So here we have some deployment tips from the developers. They're talking about to use the shade, you want to use this aircraft and basically ensure that this EMP detonation as well, if you can micro that as well. On top of that, we talked a little bit about that. The adjacent hexes to the shade are going to get that EMP effect. So it doesn't really describe it too well inside the game, but uh, you know, once you get a feel for it in the game, it becomes pretty intuitive. You just kind of use it or play against it a few times and you'll kind of you'll kind of realize what's going on there with that EMP effect. It also lists some counters like missile squads, hammerheads, zone troopers, etc. Basically anything that can attack air because it cannot fight back against air air units. So we're going to go into the game here. I'm going to open up my Bluestacks 4. If you want to be able to play Rivals on your PC or Mac, I'll also leave a link in the description below. I do get like two cents per download or something if you want to do that. Uh, we're going to load up the game here and check out the shade and how you can acquire the shade real fast. When you want to unlock the shade right now, you're going to have to be able to either purchase the, I think it's $15 or $19.99 uh, uh, purchase to unlock the shade. If you don't want to do that, you can go over here and you can spend 100 diamonds and have a 10% chance to unlock the shade. So you're going to end up spending about either uh, $19.99, which I think it's $19.99, or 1,000 diamonds to basically unlock the shade. If you're really unlucky, you might end up spending like 1,500 to 2,000 diamonds. Uh, so it's either you want to go for the guaranteed unlock or take a little bit of a gamble you could potentially also get it on the first roll so for just a 100 diamond so it's up to you if you're not interested in the newest unit now the I believe the new units are premium for 
about a week or two, and then they go into those crates that you get in the events and on the rotation. So once you unlock the unit, what should you do? You should probably clone it up instead of buying it again from those 100 diamond crates. You can then use your cloning chambers on it once you have it available to you. Uh, cloning chambers are very well are very useful and actually the best event that's coming up today in about three hours from the recording of this video. Uh, you're going to actually be able to get a lot of cloning labs from the resource challenge and the rivals champions events. So if you're low on cloning labs, this would be the perfect time to actually try and get eight, nine, ten wins in this challenge and then get about five cloning labs and then you can clone it up to the respectable level. You don't really even need it to be that high of a level. I think uh, it didn't test the breakpoints, but it does okay even when it's under leveled, especially because it's cheap. Anyways, enough about the shade. I'm going to have a video playing with it in the future, in the very near future. Let's talk about now the patch notes. Now for the patch notes, we got a small patch that seemed basically the TLDR a decent patch if it was about a month or two ago <laughs> but now we also have the Razorback and uh, yeah so Dr. Liang they they're calling this a nerf uh, but um, Dr. Liang basically got a buff. They reduced the cost of it down to 40 again. I don't know why. Solomon got buffed, which is fantastic because Solomon was being underplayed and the Iron Cannon was so expensive. So you, now you can do some either tempo plays or, or base kills with Solomon. Jump Jets got a buff, which is good because they were so fragile. You could actually, something that they were good at, they were supposed to be good at was to kill wheels and you could just swarm them with wheels so now maybe jump jets can do better against that. Also, they took a lot of extra damage just running across rocks and stuff, so jump jets are going to be a little bit more tanky. Shockwaves and flame troopers respectively got a sp speed increase. Speed is probably the strongest stat in the game in my opinion, so now they move from average to fast, and to give you an idea, like laser troops are average speed, so they're actually going to be much faster than laser troops. They could probably hunt them down Kane also, just like Solomon, got a similar buff where they reduced the cost of the commander power, so it's now from 130 to 110. So that's, they're talking about how now he can maybe even fight infantry. It was already decent against something like zone troopers. Fanatics got a big vehicle damage nerf. 32 to 18, that's pretty significant. And so now they're going to be on par with other infantry units that do damage to vehicles. And they're going to be more focused on players are going to need to really just use them for their boost capability. AOE. Uh, boosting capability instead of just killing every single type of units. There is some jade related uh, nerfs here, but I want to go and end on that, so I'm going to skip that for now. We talked about the shock waves got a buff to the fast movement speed and the nod counterpart flame troopers also got that same fast buff. Now let's talk about bikes. Bikes got a big nerf. Now they're going to do less damage to both air and vehicles. I don't think this is a good change because Razorback didn't get touched in this in this patch. Razorback super overpowered and bikes are one of those early game units that you're going to need to fight the Razorback until you can get something like a Phantom out on the field. Also Mohawks got buffed the previous patch or two in the summertime and so and they already destroyed bikes as it is so now bikes against mohawks is going to be a no bueno 100 and you're really going to actually need to do something like a phantom or something to fight a mohawk for feels bad to have to use a 100 cost unit to try and kill off 50 cost uh, mohawks when you could should <laughs> and and your laser troops aren't going to be that effective if they have something like a razorback on the field or a sniper team Anyways, so the bikes got a big nerf. I wasn't a fan of that. Now let's talk about the Jade uh, sort of nerf. So the missile damage, the commander power, the straight up commander power to the base was doing 3,500 damage. Now it's doing 2,500 damage. So big decrease in damage over a thousand. 
but they did increase the chemical explosion damage by about 10%. So from 2250 to 2500, so it'll balance out if you're using gas clouds to explode your opponent's base. But if you're just trying to finish off the base with callous missiles as is, some Jade players were not even playing a unit that had gas clouds, it's going to be much more difficult. Chemical Warriors also got a nerf in their vehicle damage, which I'm not a huge fan of. They even do lower vehicle damage than uh, Fanatics now. They're doing 10 vehicle damage as opposed to 18 from Fanatics, and they were all already, before the pre-buff, were doing 15 damage. So pre-buff, they were still going to be doing less vehicle damage, and now they're doing absolutely abysmal vehicle damage. They're going to just get slaughtered by wheels again. And so that is the patch notes. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.